how they just look. That's a. I'm. Um, we're gonna. We're just gonna talk about this deck. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I want to remind you before we jump into today's deck, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Not only does it help support, but on top of that, you are entered to win some free cards. We are giving away a draft booster box of Streets of New Capenna. Uh, we're doing that in early May. I don't remember the exact date. I apologize. It's been up for a while because we want to give you guys as much time as possible to, to enter and do all the stuff you need to do. So details are on our, uh, our website at itresolvesmtg.com. There's an article posted there as well as a video on our landing page here on YouTube. If you want to check that out, you can check out all the details. But let's talk about today's deck. It's Mono Green Aggro, guys. We're going simple today. Here's my thing. Um, I've played a lot of Standard recently, both on and off camera. And one of the things that always frustrates me is fighting uh, Mono Green. Uh, because it's just such an annoying deck to play against, uh, to be honest. It's very, very frustrating because green has so much good, powerful, on-curve threats that it's really difficult to outpace unless you're running like a sweeper-heavy deck, a control deck, something like that, of which there are plenty, of course. But uh, this is one of those decks that is just super, super good, super stompy, super powerful, and so I wanted to give it another shot today because we haven't actually played mono green in this format uh for quite a while uh and so i thought i'd give it another shot here there's not a ton to talk about we did get a couple of new things most importantly of course besiju uh being able to destroy some stuff is really really helpful i know there are a lot of different configurations with this deck so there's a lot of things you can include some things you don't have to include i did go uh swapping in some of the like old growth trolls and things like that i find them to be quite good and resilient to the sweeper decks because you can then replay them later later uh so it just gives you an onboard threat we do have a one of unnatural growth uh this is just a really powerhouse card this will end the game super quick if you can get it out uh and so i do have that out uh one thing i don't have in this deck is the sculptor of winter play which does allow you to ramp an extra turn if you need to so you can kind of skip to turn four uh but that didn't seem as important to me in this version of the list because we've got so many three drops that it really doesn't need to happen. We've got enough land uh, between these as well as the Mammoth, and I don't feel like we're gonna need to miss too many land drops. Uh, and so, and we're also only trying to get to five mana. So I didn't feel the need to have those in the deck. Uh, so I did kind of remove that and, and swap those out for some things. But all in all guys, this is just a, a simply teched out version. We've got the Briar Bridge Tracker, it gives us a little card draw, the Cemetery Prowler, hopefully gonna slow some things down, but both of these are Vigilance threats, uh, which is really important for us. And that's about it. I mean, most everything else is pretty pretty much the same. We do have the one of inscription as well, but that's it. Let's uh, let's jump into this, guys. I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this because we already know how the deck works. So let's just jump in. Let's see how many games we can get in and hopefully we can win a few along the way. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, this is a pretty bad start. I'm not going to lie. We do have all the lands we need, so I'm assuming we I guess we keep uh, we're gonna try this. This is a pretty bad hand. We're not doing anything really until turn three. <laughs> uh, and a land is not exactly ideal for our draw. We do want to eventually transform this oddity, which is certainly a good card, but... Uh... Hmm. Okay. Uh, so I think we just do this and we pass. Probably gonna take a pretty big hit here from the Vengeful Victim. Uh, this, I imagine, is gonna be a really interesting matchup. I'm very curious to see how this goes. So, wow, okay, no attacks either. Interesting. Well, there's our one drop that we wanted, but let's be mana efficient. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, eventually, we'll probably fight off this Katilda. At least that's the goal. Um, okay, they're going to borrow time. Sure. A little annoying. Not the end of the world. Uh, if we can get to five mana, we can actually just drop this. Uh... All right, so what is the best move? We can do this and draw, or we can just play the oddity. I think we do play this, and I actually do think we attack. If they want to block, that's perfectly fine. Um, but the goal of this is really to 
yeah they have to sacrifice it so i'm just looking to get some power off of their side of the field um yeah okay so they just have another one goodness gracious all right interesting blizzard brawl is pretty good actually so let's do this um i think step one is actually to draw a card so we can't do everything we want quite yet uh that's kind of a downside here but we can do this spit out that 2-2 two -two. um and then fight off the katilda which is a very helpful play for us. Now, this is still a very, very scary threat, but that actually worked out quite well because now we do have a mana sink that we can utilize. Hollow Taunting is terrifying. Um, curious to see, I guess they're not attacking with that. Hmm. That's fascinating. Um, okay, so what's the play? So we can kind of get them here. So if we do this, um, we can attack in. Obviously, they may block, they may not. We'll see. Looks like they're going to. Uh, and then we just get to do this and throw a couple counters on the, the wolf here. Sure. I mean, that seems okay. Um, it leaves them with no creatures. Now, I'm sure they've got extra plays here. Uh, and with the hollowed haunting, that's definitely a scary thought. But... I think that's still just our best play. Okay, a borrowed time. I'm assuming they're going to take out the Ranger class. Or it could be the 5-5. Five five. Looks like it's the 5-5. Five five. Interesting. Okay, well. I'm going to do this. I wish this was instant speed, but I guess that'd be a little too broken. Um, <laughs> Let's do this. Let's just see what we draw here. Another Ranger class is not bad. Um... I am going to go ahead and fight this off. And yes, I know we uh, diminished the power level a little bit of this, but that's not really the point. I guess we should have fought with the ascendant, the pack leader here. That was a bit of a mistake, but that's okay. Royal creatures, sure. Again, we've got a backup ranger class, and now we've got even more we can do. So I think the play... Let's do this. We probably should do this first, but I'm going to... I'm gonna do it second here. All right, so we do have an old growth troll off the top. So that could have been a more efficient play, but I think this is okay. All right, so now they definitely should hit the ranger class if they can. If they hit the pack leader, I will be tremendously surprised. Wow, okay. Uh, I would not have done that at all. I think I definitely would have gone the other route, but that's fine by me. Um, So we could just play Mammoth, play Old Growth Troll. So this does get kind of scary, and we do have a long way to go here. That's kind of our problem, is they just have so much they can do, and so many. Look at this. They can just attack, and I mean, we're dead. This creates a 4-4 that's also attacking. Yeah, good game. That was a very annoying matchup with the borrow times, but you know what? It is what it is. That's one of the things that we have to think about, and that's okay. Let's jump into a game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. I do actually really like this hand. I would love an extra land or two. If we can get there, that'd be phenomenal, but being on the play here is great as well. We can get the pack leader down next turn. We've got multiple plays available. We can either do pack leader plus blizzard brawl, or we could do werewolf uh, pack leader. Let's see what we'd like to do. Hmm. Really wish we had another land. So this, that would fight off, which is the problem here. Um, I'm nervously, well, first things first, let's attack. Let's just see what they do. Okay, they don't want to trade off. I'm going to go this route. This might be incorrect. I have no idea. We're going to do that. I don't love the generous visitor being on the battlefield. This is definitely going to be like the Naya runes deck, and it's going to be really obnoxious to deal with. <laughs> um, but that's one of those things that I don't feel we can leave on the field because it will get powerful very, very quickly. Um, 
I think we get the pack leader down because we are gonna start attacking in with this and so we want it to be able to um utilize its ability here It'd be great if we can get the cemetery prowler down we do need a land for that though wow they just man these the enchantment hate is so real right now uh and we're just not gonna draw lands cool <laughs> guys we're on a losing streak. If you watched the last video, uh, we didn't do so hot, and it sucks. But you know what? It's all good. It happens. I mean, it's a land. <laughs> I mean, we definitely attack in here. They most likely will not block. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, but I do think it's correct to attack in there. We just kind of need to. And at this point, we really just need to get more lands and uh, hopefully get something to slow them down a little bit. But I mean, at this point, <laughs> at this point, it's not likely that's going to happen. Um, so I do get an attack in for two here. They gain two back. That's great. And they get a 1-1. One -one. Right. Um... I'm going to attack him first. Obviously, they can just block however they see fit, um, and that's fine. So this does a better job of drawing us cards next turn. However, this is a better blocker. I'm going to go the blocker route. This also gets the generous visitor out of the graveyard, so any creatures are going to cost a little bit more at least. And we get that out of the graveyard before they can pull it back with the restoration, which is helpful. They did not throw anything back. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Why do we even play this game? Honestly, we are so bad. I mean... Game three time. We're doing it. All right, guys. Here we are. Game three. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, this is an okay start. So I'm going to keep... I can't believe how badly we've been losing lately. We lost four games in a row last time. I did test this deck, granted only like two or three games, uh, and won all of them. And then here we go again. This happens all the time. It's a little annoying, um, but that's fine. Let's see what the opponent's looking to do. All right. Um, what do we discard here? I think it's the Mammoth. I think I like the old Growth Troll better. I'm gonna try for the pack leader. Chances are this doesn't stick. Um, and we do wanna save that ranger class if we can. I think that's gonna be a pretty key card for us. Yeah, okay. We kind of figured they'd have something, um, but I do think that was worth the play. They're not discarding anything this turn, which is also kind of nice. Wow, okay, so they went ahead and got the containment breach knowing that we've got the ranger class, which is clever. Um. think yeah i think it's just a old growth troll not 100 percent sure on that um but we know they've got the containment breach so like we literally know they're gonna do something so this is just jund uh jund is very very good in general yeah i do kind of like this um so we can Cemetery Prowler get this out of there, which is pretty good. Um, and then here, I'm actually going to be aggressive. If they decide to block, we've got the Snakeskin Veil. Uh, the reason I did that is if they do kill this old Growth Troll eventually, we still get it back. Uh, but there's, I, I want to make them burn spells on it uh, because it is such a powerful card. Okay, they're going to Binding. I'm curious to see what they actually take out here. Part of me wishes I had saved, but I think it's okay. All right, cool. Yeah, you got the Prowler. I mean, I think we go max power. I, I don't think there's any way we don't at this point. We just try and get as much damage in as we can and uh, hope for the best here. I'm trying really hard to play around this containment breach because I know that they're gonna kill it. Um, but at the same time, you know, if they just have a way to kill one or two things here, we we are going to be in trouble regardless. So, okay. So they kill the Ranger class regardless then, essentially. 
Um, but a 1-1 really isn't that good against us because we do have trample on everything. So at this point, feeling a little more confident. Not 100%, but <laughs> definitely just attack in. They're going to try and keep this up for death touch this upcoming turn, I assume. Yeah. Do we just win? Yes, we got a win. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank goodness. Okay, we did it. We got a win, guys. Let's jump into a game four, though. We got a little bit of time. Let's see if we can get one more. All right, guys, here we are. This is probably going to be our last game, and this is a pretty easy keep, actually, with the Ascendant pack leader and then the Werewolf pack leader back to back. That's uh, about as good as you can hope for. But you also have the Lair, which we can use later on, so that's a good setup. Curious to see what the opponent's going to be playing. Uh, we've seen a, a good variety of decks, which is kind of cool. Another pack leader, huh? Okay, uh, well, first things first, we attack. Second main, we'll play Werewolf Pack Leader and hope for the best. Literally all we can do. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, the play is the same. What we could do is fire this up for one to get in for six, but I don't think that's worth it. I'm just going to attack in. Now the question is, what do we do? I think it's Old Growth Troll. Again, if they sweep, um, or if they kill that troll, we still get something in return. So we're kind of setting up for a removal piece on their end, um, which is fine. And instead, they have a Skullport version, which is slow in comparison, so that's fine. All right, let's do this. It does throw a counter on the pack leader, and then we just get to draw a card. So they prob I mean, they have to block something here, but the question is, what are they blocking and why? Okay, so they're taking a lot, uh, which is fine by me. This is what you want out of Mono Green Stompy and not what we've gotten. So that's a little unfortunate, but uh, this is at least a good representation of what the deck is meant to do. Now, of course, they could still have something, I'm sure, but I'm not exactly positive what it could be. Meat Hook doesn't do it. Um, and yeah, they just give up. They only played a Skullport Merchant that whole game. <laughs> we have time for a game five, guys. Let's do a game five. All right, guys, here we are for our fifth game and probably our last. This is not a very good keep. We are overabundance on our, well, we have an overabundance of three drops and that's not at all what we want. I hate having a mulligan here, but I think it's just the right call. And yes, that we can keep. I think we'll throw one of the Ranger classes back and hope for the best here. Land is good because we do have some stuff we'd like to get to. Uh, so I'm perfectly happy with that. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to go this route. I like to get this down. Uh, and if they remove the creature, then we still get something left behind. Uh, and so I feel like that might be worth it. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to take a different line here and we'll see how this actually goes. I'm not overly optimistic, but I am going to do this. So we attack, we throw a counter on there. Okay, they just take it. Um, so now we've got Snakeskin Veil left up. Kind of like that. Um, hmm. I don't know if this is the right way to do this or not. Also, if you can't tell, uh, Mono Green is like my least favorite thing to play ever. I'm not very good with it. It's just natural fact of life. It's not my strong suit. Uh, and so this is certainly something that uh, is a learning experience for me. I'm leaving up the snakeskin veil here. I'm not going to play the pack leader. So this obviously gets a counter. What we're trying to do is get out of meat hook range, essentially. I mean, that's like number one most important thing here is to not die to meat hook. Uh, and I do assume they've got it. Exile. Um, yeah. I mean, can't do anything about that, sadly. All right, well, there we go. We did it. Uh, Shadow's Verdict is rough against this deck, especially when we're stuck on lands here. Really not good. Um, okay. 
Yep. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, that's something. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just old growth troll. I think we do attack here. This is going to get a counter, so it's basically just going to trade. Um, and yeah, that's fine. That's probably a bad call. We just need lands. Guys, gonna be honest. Wow, they have every exile effect in the... I'm not playing this very well, I know. So everybody in the comment section who's about to type how to better play this, please do. But also keep in mind, I'm I'm very aware. Um, but this is like, when you don't have a land, it's just annoying. <laughs> yep. Well, guys, I hope everybody's doing well today. I'm doing less well, but you know what? It's all good. Totally fine. We're just here to have some fun. Uh, and we did get a couple wins, right? So that's cool. Ah, uh, yeah. I think uh, this is... If we don't draw a land next turn, I definitely just concede, I'm sure. Oh, they just... That's a... Um, we're, gonna, we're just gonna talk about this deck. Don't even worry about it. All right, guys, so not super great, uh, as was yesterday's deck. So unfortunate, I know, uh, again, I know I don't play mono green super well. It is not my kind of strategy at all. Uh, I have a very hard time choosing between two threats and which is the correct threat at which individual time and that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, if you're playing a control deck or something like that, you've got a clear like, OK, this is what we should leave up because we're just trying to do stuff and you can react. Uh, and I like being on the reactive end of play a lot more, but I thought it was worth a shot. We didn't do so hot with it. Again, I do think you can try different configurations with this. I also think this was missing a few cards that I would have loved to have. Uh, in particular, the um, there's a little green guy that basically flips and he can destroy artifacts and enchantments. I can't remember his name, but that would have been helpful against like the borrow times and those kinds of things. So I do think there's options for a lot more tech than what we introduced into this one. So maybe play around with that, but all in all, we didn't do so hot and that's okay. I hope everybody enjoyed it anyway. Watching me lose is fun. So thank you guys so much. I do appreciate it. Have a fantastic day, guys. I'll see you again very soon.